our next speaker, Judith Corley Lay, is going to talk about the Pavement Preservation Research Roadmap. Judy became director of the National Center for Pavement Preservation in April of 2017. Talk about the update to the Pavement Preservation Research Roadmap. Um, this has been a year and three quarters effort thus far. I'm going to talk about where we are now on that update, what the new roadmap looks like, and I'm going to tell you right now you're not going to be able to see it because I've, I've condensed it onto a slide and it, it it's, but you'll get the shape of it and, and an idea of, of how it's formulated. I'm going to talk about what were the highest priority projects and uh, about the process for updating the roadmap. We need to have a process where the, the roadmap gets updated on a regular basis so that it remains current, um, not just for the next two years, but for the next 10 years or more. And then a few next steps. Having worked in, in government, I love these cartoons because it's, it's just so typical of government. Can you give me a status report on your status report? Um, I, I always enjoyed those. So, but just to tell you what we've done, what's happened, I held seven go-to meetings to discuss various aspects of the, the Pavement Preservation Research Roadmap. After that, we developed, we consolidated ideas and developed 37 abbreviated research needs statements and nine synthesis statements. I'll talk a little bit about those. I used seven electronic surveys to do prioritization, and I want to thank you all, all of you who participated in any of those go-to meetings or surveys. The invitation to participate went to 150 people, and it, was, it included industry, agencies, various people who indicated they were interested, and so forth. And then we reordered the roadmap to reflect the priorities. So the highest items on the chart are the highest priority research needs statements. And then we developed a draft process for updating the roadmap. Now this is the slide I knew you wouldn't be able to read, but the idea is that across the top there are seven umbrella areas that begin with asset management, pavement management type things, so that's the planning piece. Next to that is treatment design then it, and treatment selection. After that is materials, then construction and contracting, then performance, and finally benefits. So and under each one of those are topics that came up in the go-to meetings relative to those umbrella topics. And now I'm getting right into the topics themselves because I think that's what people kind of want to see. What came out as the most prioritized items? And this is a little subtle, but not terribly subtle. The largest Bold font are the highest priority. There, there are two under asset management. Then there was a group that was a lower priority, but still significant priority. And then some at the bottom were lower priority items. So the two highest priority items in pavement management, asset management, were the cyclical approach to pavement preservation. Agencies want to know how, how do you figure out the best cycles if you're going to use a cyclic approach and how does that work. The next one was case studies and pavement management system and pavement preservation. There have been syntheses on this topic, but the synthesis program no longer allows the author of the synthesis to say that something is best practices. It's been that way for several years, and so if you, if you read syntheses now, there are very detailed surveys of state practice, and that certainly has usefulness, but in this particular case, we want them to identify best practices so that states are not having to hunt for best practices. They're, they're essentially um, identified. So I'm going to trust you all to read the, the lower priority items, I'm going to try and catch up a little bit on time here. The next topic was under treatment selection and design, and you'll see the little umbrellas, that's to remind you that that's an umbrella topic. 
So two high priorities, and then the others were, were approximately equal, but lower priority. Guidance and best practices for pavement preservation in urban environments, um, that was a high priority topic. Urban environments have a lot of challenges with utilities, with traffic, with uh, curb and gutter, and maintaining access to driveways and all kinds of, of issues. So this would be really identifying those urban area practices. In addition, impact of overlay type and thickness for cold in place, cold central plant, and hot in place treatment performance. And, and again, uh, some work has been done on that, but the, this is looking at the newer products, the newer processes, and, and really updating uh, that information. In the materials area, of course, in the past, the materials was the, the central thrust of much of the research that was done in pavement preservation was looking at those materials, but there's still things that need to be done. One of the big, the highest priority items was documentation of what material properties will best suit us moving forward if we get them into our pavement management systems. As you probably know, pavement management systems generally do not specify specific materials. This is, okay, if we're going to put in some material properties, which will be the most beneficial for us to be able to uh, get performance on our preservation treatments in the future. The next one, performance-related and performance-based specifications for preservation treatments. There have been, there's been some work in this area. There is a lot more work that needs to be done, including perhaps development of some samples so that states can, can really uh, hone in and, and get a, a feel for how best to implement performance-based specifications. Construction and contracting, there was one topic that clearly was the highest priority, and it's interesting because it came up in the industry meeting yesterday morning, and that was development of guidelines for adequate inspector training for pavement preservation treatments. States have a very good sense of what training is needed for inspecting asphalt and for inspecting new concrete, but this is what do we need for inspecting preservation treatments. And then you can see some of the others. There, there are a whole list there, uh, three that are, that one of which came out of this group and went to the subcommittee on materials, and that was the mumble rumble strip uh, with thin uh, layered treatments. That is still in here. I didn't take anything off the plate just because it had been put forward. Until work is completed, it stays in the roadmap. That came out of this group. The performance area, there was a lot of, uh, there were a couple high priority items. The impact of pavement condition on future performance of preservation treatments. This is the holy grail that we've all been waiting for, for for many, many years. And this is our great hope that MinRoad and NCAT are going to answer this question. But just in case you haven't really thought about it, even after NCAT and MinRoad complete their work, it is not necessarily a straightforward task to take their results and apply it to a pavement management system over thousands of miles of roadways. And so this may be a project that even after NCAT and MinRoad finish, there are still pieces of that work that need to be done to, to move that to an implementable project, a product. And then you can see some of the others on there, what data is needed to capture the performance of pavement preservation treatments. We know what data we collect, but is that the best data for the performance of our preservation treatments? And, and you can see the others. There's, there's many good topics here. The benefits umbrella topic area was a new topic. Um, it did not appear in the original roadmap, but I think it's become increasingly important 
for us to try and articulate the benefits of preservation to many audiences. The first topic there is called societal benefits of preservation, and that includes a laundry list of possible benefits. The improvement in your home resale value, the improvement in the local economy, the impact on uh, local trucking and, and all kinds of, there are many, many societal benefits, including the um, ability of emergency vehicles to reach various areas, in, in, particularly in rural areas. Okay, so that's, that's an important societal benefit. Another one is the importance of some guidance on how to, uh, how to reach a good mix, a good balance between reconstruction, rehabilitation, and preservation, or capital maintenance, whatever you, you want to call it. And that is a very difficult thing. We've seen that pendulum shift from new construction toward more and more of maintaining existing infrastructure. So very important topic. Nine syntheses topics were developed as a result of the go-to meetings, and three of them are the highest priorities. One is, is on including pavement preservation in your pavement management system. It's not so straightforward. We've heard, I've heard in this meeting about a number of states using various different pavement management systems, some still looking for pavement management systems, some information, some improvements on how to include those treatments can be very helpful. Agency methodologies for selection of treatments. This is, you know, how, do, how does Illinois do it? How does Michigan do it? How does Ohio do it? How does Iowa do it? That's very helpful when you're trying to say, look at your own practice and say, are we doing it the best we could? And then finally, agency design methods for chip seals, microsurfacing, and slurry seals. Many states just use a, a range rate for their application rates. If you use a design method, what design method do you use? And, and, you know, and, and maybe even how do you feel that improves the product you're getting? So there are nine of these in all. And just so you know, the synthesis program is very, very competitive. So I'm hoping that out of this list, we can get some agreement among practitioners about which ones are most important and push those forward and get, get some of these funded. In addition to the research needs statements, activities were identified. There's a narrow line between what is an activity and what is research, but basically we said if a state has a pretty, pretty good pavement management system, they should be able to do uh, these activities in-house or using locally available consultants or their local universities. The benefits versus cost of good quality data, adequate and timely training for data collectors. This is not inspectors, this is the data collectors, and so forth. You can see this list. These are, one of them that is interesting is pavement preservation, inclusion in pavement management section history. That's part of your pavement management system. And then the inclusion of unusual events. This would be the big flooding events. So that 10 years later, somebody can look and say, yes, as a result of that event, we had a 20% decrease in the length of in this, the service life of, of these, these roads that were affected. I also reviewed all of the state agency websites, their research websites, trying to see, the goal was to see could I use those websites to identify all of the pavement preservation research that's going on in states. I'm just going to tell you the answer was no. Only 10 to 15 percent of the websites included the information that I thought was most critical, which meant final reports available online, and a list of current projects with their completion dates. That's kind of what you need to be able to develop a calendar. 
When that didn't work, I said, okay, well, let's consider a plan B. And I, I would be interested in your feedback on this. How would you all feel about us using the partnerships to solicit only projects that your states are doing that are related to pavement preservation? If I sent you that survey, could you get it to the right person to answer the question about whether your state has anything going on? Yes, this is yes, and this is no. It's, it, and, and it isn't a trick question. I'm just kind of curious. We, we may try it next year. It won't come at the meeting. I'll send it out nationally and try and gather that information. Just keep in mind that it's part of the effort to keep the, pro, the, the roadmap up to date. That means we're going to end up using some state input and then we'll follow that up with, with a national survey and try and pull that together to get an idea of what all research is ongoing um, at any point in time. We want to use reviewers to review final reports to determine whether items on the roadmap have been completed. I'm not going to, we're, we're running short on time, I'm going to skip through this. If you're asked to be a reviewer, please read the report and you're not reviewing it to, to see if you like the wording. You're not having to check that what you're looking for is does this fit the roadmap research needs statement? Does it answer the question that the roadmap asks? There are potential reviewers, the Pavement Preservation Expert Task Group, FHWA staff, volunteers from the Pavement Partnerships, industry volunteers are always welcome and then volunteers from the TRB Committee on Pavement Preservation. So there's quite a pool there to work from. Doing that, though, requires that somebody be in charge of assigning those reviews and then making sure they get the results in and, and provide the, the necessary updates. I'm recommending a caretaker. This is not a volunteer. This is somebody who's, who's doing this um, on a regular basis and will report annually to FHWA and the Pavement Preservation Expert Task Group. And uh, they would also be the person, if you think of a new research idea, and I hope there would be new ones, that they would bring those forward. The roadmap has been developed. It's sort of together. My hope is that the partnerships will be able to use the roadmap to really help them in their research efforts. You know, they'll be able to know what were the highest priority items and, and try and, and work collaboratively to get that work done. And finally, everyone will be asked to participate in, in small ways in updating the roadmap. Are there any questions? Thank you for the positive head shaking. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.